I have an exciting video for you today. Not only am I going to show you how I paint my orcs, but we're also going to collaborate with an amazing content creator from within our hobby. I'll tell you more along the way though, let's just jump straight in. Generally, when I paint my orcs, I give them a cartoony look with vibrant green skin and bright orange rust. Today though, I'm instead looking for a more savage and grim dark look to them. I'm selecting a handful of the new Beast Snagger boys and also a leftover knob I have to act as their larger leader. A grimdark style of model from me would normally begin with a black prime. However, I plan on the skin and some armor panels being quite light and I don't want to have that battle with the paints later, so white it is. Avalon Sunset mixed with Skarsnik Green creates the base coat for the skin. I'm starting with the skin because these parts are generally deeper on the models, so I don't want to be trying to reach in later, causing mistakes as I bump my brush against the other areas. So what is the video about? Well, I love watching YouTube whilst I paint, and the majority of what I watch is other content creators. Now around the time that I launched my channel, I noticed that another chap named Mason launched his channel, MT Speedcrafts. Where my channel focuses on mediocre paint jobs and B-grade entertainment, Mason has always inspired me with his creative and rich designs of his dioramas. I'll slap some paint on a model and put some 80s key tar over the top to try and entertain you, but Mason will guide you through the design and construction of a diorama that tells a story. I mean, check these out. How amazing are they? Back to painting for a second. Mixing in a little Caliban green to create a shade for the recess areas. I prefer to paint shaded areas for paints like skin in a controlled motion with a paint rather than just covering the area with a wash. If you're a strap for time though, then washes and contrast paints are your friend. In the grooves of the muscles, under the arms, in any cracks in the skin and textures on the face, this creates shadow and depth. Now when I'm painting, I don't actually think that any particular style or technique I use is actually my own. As mentioned, I sit and watch and learn from so many other content creators. If I remember where a technique, recipe or process comes from, I'll give a shout out. If I miss one, comment it below so we can help the artists get the credit their hard work deserves. This style of skin comes from Infernal Brush on YouTube, who paints in that heavy metal incredible style. I'm painting in a broken down, faster version of this, and you'll see the difference, but check his out for an amazing detailed way to paint orc skin. I'll include a link in the description. Where was I? Right, why am I painting orcs? So I reached out to Mason with the idea that we could join forces for a couple of videos to spice up the content on our channels. All he knows is that I'm going to paint him something. I'm going to wrap it up blind box style and send it all the way across the world for him. Once he opens it and discovers what it is, he has to then come up with a design of a diorama to tell a story. Orcs would look awesome in a wasteland diorama, and I'm going to add in an extra model as a surprise for him to help out with the storytelling, but you're going to have to wait till the end to see what that surprise model is. So then we'll edit and upload our videos at the same date and time, so that you get a painting tutorial from me, an amazing diorama from Mason, and an insight into our design processes. So once this video ends, you'll be able to click on the link and jump across to part two, which will be on Mason's channel. And please give him all the support he absolutely deserves. Caliban Green on its own, and I've thinned this down a little more than usual. This is helping me to accurately paint a thin recess shade in the deepest and darkest areas of the skin, and also in the details, like on the face and in between the fingers. Normally on skin, I start dark and work my way light, but you can see with the Savage Orcs that I will start midway, then paint the darks, and then I'll come back to the highlights. Ogre and Camo is my first highlight, and I've thinned this down in the hopes that rather than having a fast jump from one colour to the next, instead this will be a softer and smoother transition. If you want the cartoon look, then rather than blending, have that direct transition from one layer to the next. Orc muscles are a great place to practice shadows and highlights because they are so over the top and it's more obvious where to put the colours. 
For me, what sells the look of the skin is the human skin tone areas around the patches that are worn out. Areas like ears, lips, elbows, and knuckles. Orcs need to moisturize. Crumpet is important, but so is exfoliation and hydration. Thanks, Gordon. Time for another pro hobby tip. This one is number 64. When you're painting now, rest your forearms so you can minimize the effect of the giggling that you'll have whilst you paint the orc nipples. You're welcome. Kislev Flesh is a brighter skin tone and it's been mixed with ochre and camo now to create small highlights on those worn skin areas. Orcs have huge hands and adding these extra details can make them look great. Whilst these paints are still fresh on my palette, I should probably paint all of the mouths, in case I make a mistake and need to tidy up any areas. In hindsight, you could even start by painting the mouths, but that just seems like madness to me. Black mixed with corn red is nice and dark for the insides of the mouth, and means that features like the tongue, teeth and lips will stand out more when they're brighter. Oh lord, I forgot the intro at the start. Ah, stuff it, I'll do it now. I'll jump back across to the skin for the next stage of highlights, which is ogre and camo mixed with U sharp T bone. In the same way that you would paint an edge highlight on your Space Marine armor, paint a thin line along the very brightest parts of your orc skin. Some are obvious, like the sharp details on the face, and some are less obvious, like on the muscles. So follow the curve of the most raised portion of the muscle, which is where your other highlights should be. Mix corn red and incubi darkness together to create a dark infected looking purple. I use this to paint in the recess areas of all the scars and marks across my orc skin. If you rotate the model around, you'll see that their body is absolutely adorned with battle scars. Incubi darkness again, but this time mixed with Sotec green. Thin this down and use it as a wash or a glaze for the eyelids and the bags under the eyes of the orc. This will help draw attention to the eyes, but also, as you will see in a minute, pairs really well with the eye color we've selected. Corn red is the first color. Thankfully, these models have large eyes. Take your time, use a thin brush, and move the model around to get the best angle to each of the eyes. If you make a mistake, use your skin colors on the palette to fix them as you go. After Corn Red is Troll Slayer Orange, and I'm painting about 50% of the eyeball with this. Then the last step for the eye is a really small dot with Flash Gits Yellow. It sounds like a lot of work just for an eye, but remember that this is where the viewer's attention is naturally drawn to, so take the time to give it a little extra love. Okay, all right. Already this guy is looking pretty cool. Let's finish that mouth, then we will know where we sit. Use any combination you like of mixing browns, pinks, reds, and flesh tones. You don't need to buy a recommended paint for a tongue, and they don't even have to be universal across your whole army. I've mixed Bugman's Glow with Corn Red, and I'm pretty sure I highlight with another flesh tone mixed with pink, probably. Teeth! Xandru Dust is the base coat, then a layer of Yushabzi Bone, and then a thin highlight on the large teeth with an off-white. We do not need to spend any more time on teeth. Same with fingernails and claws. Basic three steps. Base with Incubi Darkness, layer with Cabalite Green, and highlight with Cyparite Green. Or however you want to do them, black is also cool. I super tactically disarm this orc knob with the teachings I've learnt from Sensei Steven Seagal. For more moves like this, be sure to check out my hand-to-hand -hand combat channel. The clothing section for orcs. I'm going to give you the overall theory and techniques, but not bother listing all of the paints because the name of the colour really doesn't matter here. 
I'm picking out five or six fairly neutral colors that are mostly browns. My goal is to have the clothes look neat, but I don't want them to steal the show from the skin, weapons and armor plates. This can be a lengthy process, so settle in and work your way through it, being as neat as you can for any areas that share a border with the skin we just finished. Contrast paint can be great here, as they will save you a little time on the next step when we wash the clothes. I don't want my orcs to look uniform, so I'm randomizing where I put the colors, and now that I'm onto the washes, I can create some additional variety here by putting an Agrax wash on one brown, and then using a sepia wash on the same brown clothing color on a different model. There we go, we've powered through the boring base coating of all the trashy orc clothes. I won't spend long on layering and highlighting either. The difference here though is that I want to sell the effect that the clothes have texture to them. So when I paint some of my highlights on the large surfaces, I will paint in a cross hatch pattern as I think this helps it look more like a fabric than smooth pants. Freddie Mercury gets smooth pants, not the orcs. Thank you again, Warboss Gordon. Weapons now, and I could make a half dozen different videos on the different styles I use to paint orc weapons. Today's method though, is to pick out a few parts of the weapons to make them look really battered and overused, and have the other bits simply dirty. Starting with a dark base of 50-50 Rhinox hide and black, I'm painting parts of the weapons that come into contact with the enemy, such as blades, saws, and axes. Now I'll start building up the brighter colors of the rust, combining Mornfang brown, corn red, and black, and then using the stippling technique to paint this in the center areas and around any holes or scratches in the blades. I'm also going to paint a couple of other metallic parts like this, such as some areas of the sluggers, just to give them some added variety. After several years of painting, I firmly believe that orcs take the longest of any of the armies to paint, and you need three times as many of the models. Space Marines, Tau, Necron, they're all simple to paint, but orcs have so many different textures and elements to them, plus then you need to do the weathering effects at the end. Name me a tougher army to paint, you can't. I will stop complaining now. Rider again with Wild Rider Red this time, and covering a smaller amount of the weapon's face. My theory with having the weapon so battered down and weathered means that it will afford some wiggle room to Mason if he wants to make a dirty battle scene, so that there aren't suddenly a bunch of polished shiny weapons. Now as the rusty weapons strike against enemy armor, the rust would scratch away. I'm going to create scratches using greys, because I haven't tried this before, but you could stick to using metallic silvers if you prefer. I'm picking out the areas where I think the blades would have the most frequent impacts, like around the center of the axe for example, and without any pattern to it. I'm painting strike marks and scratches. For the pistols, I focus around the very front corners and edges where they would bump into objects. I go a step lighter now with a 50-50 mix of the same grey with an off-white, again focusing in a few main contact points. I'm painting smaller scratches inside the larger, darker ones. Then one last string of highlights using off-white on its own in a few select areas. Metallics now. I pick out a gunmetal paint, in this case lead belcher, as well as an accent color for some small random parts on large metal sections. I'll use Balthazar gold for these along the way, base coating the remainder of the weapons, as well as some armor plates and any jewelry. I've worked my way through the models and now I'm going back over the top with a wash. Agrax is great for making them look even dirtier, and I'm using Nuln oil for most of the parts.
finishing them off with the same grey edge highlights from earlier. Orientate the model and your brush so you can get into a comfortable position and drag the edge of the brush along the sharp area that you want to highlight. Troll Slayer Orange Thin Down makes a great rust wash for the recess areas of your metals where water would pool. Because you've thinned it down so much, you can paint this on as though it's a normal wash and once it dries, the colour and coverage won't be as intense. Anticipation is building now because I'm almost finished and I'm starting to wonder what he's going to come up with. It could be the inside of a wrecked spaceship, or maybe a heroic last stand at an important monument inside of a fallen city. I don't know, I'm excited. Now it's time to reveal what else is being packed up and shipped across with these orcs. They're going to need a worthy adversary, and who better than the last remaining Space Marine of a tactical squad. My favourite Space Marine from the last painting guide is being wrapped up and sent across to Mason as I try and strong arm him into coming up with some conflict in the 41st millennium. Now the armour panels. These will look cool, trust me. Start by basing them with Wraithbone. If you want decals, this is when we apply them. We do it early on because the rest of our colours and effects will make them blend smoother into the panels instead of looking like a clean sticker that has been put on at the very end. Select the ones you want and place them in the wet palette and add some water on top of them to loosen them off the sheet. I've brushed on some micro set onto the areas of the panels where I want to place the decals. Now using our favourite sponge method, create some chipping and scratches to those markings to give them some age. Now Gillum and Flesh contrast paint thin down and we will use this as both a wash in the recess areas of the panels and also a glaze across the smoother areas. With the glazing, I'm dragging the brush in the direction that I want to be darker because as I lift the brush, more paint will be left at this spot. Allow this to dry and repeat the step multiple times, but reel in your starting point with the brush to be closer to the darker zone so we can create that smooth transition. Oof, I'm liking this. Okay, easy edge highlight with off-white and we're close. What does it need? Give a little extra for Mork and Gork. Not now, Gordon. I'm on a roll here. A few quick and simple darker lines in the shadows. I'm using Catachan Flesh, but any darker brown will work here. Yep, yep, that's exactly what it needed. Now I normally finish my models by painting the small base at the bottom in black as a victory lap to signify that they're complete. But these models won't have a base. Well, I mean, they're gonna have a base, but it's gonna be an epic diorama base. Anyway, so to finish them off, I'm gonna paint some rivets in gunmetal and call them complete. Let's take a closer look at the orcs that I've painted. Look at these war crazed ragtag bunch of savage orcs. Do you like this style of painting orcs? In fact, don't answer that. Instead, what I want you to put in the comments below before you jump to MT Speedcraft's video is take a guess at what sort of a diorama he's gonna come up with, but no cheating. If you're another content creator in the hobby and you'd like to do a collaboration, or even if you just have another crazy idea for me, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Shoot me an email. To the rest of you, thank you so much. Flashing Badger Painting is continuing to grow and it's all thanks to you. We also now have a membership on YouTube. If you're financially in a position and you wanna check it out, I'm not gonna stop you. I'm about to click across and I'm absolutely pinging. I can't wait to see what he's done with the minis and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Now, if I can put a link up here somewhere for his video, I will. If not, it'll be pinned in the comments below and it'll be in the video description. See you guys.